Please, I really wish I was like, all these points. I'm just like, dang, there's really not enough for me to say. But the main thing that I noticed was that I I think she was right on the money with the fact that Chris wanted to orchestrate a scenario that boosted his ego. Mm. I think he's, he's groomed both women to believe that they are his number one or that he favors them, right? So I think his mindset may have been to, like the last thing he said to Paige before this event or this scenario was that he was afraid to fall in love with her. He whispered some sweet nothings into her ear or whatever to try and gain her favor. That was his last um, chess move to try and mm. prop her up. Then he's with Mercedes and he also says, okay, I want you to meet Mercedes. I want you to have a talk. I want to kind of clear the air or whatever. And he may have groomed her as well to believe like, hey, hey, you're the mother of my son or child or whatever. I want to be able to have a life with you. And he wanted to, I think he expected a sort of um, the boy is mine scenario with Brandy on over here and Monica over here. And then there, there's cause of friction that he would step in and say, hey, I don't want all these issues. I'm going to be with the mother of my child, blah, blah, blah. And then he would call Paige after that incident and then whisper more sweet nothings into her ear. So that way he still gets best of both worlds. And he thinks that he's orchestrating a situation in which he's getting both his ex back, but then also is still doing stuff with his quote unquote wife. Mm-hmm. I think that's what he wanted out of the, out of the situation because He's getting what he wants from both women and it's boosting his ego because now he thinks, oh, I have, I don't just have one lady, I have two. So then that's more on his resume for him to be able to say like, hey, yeah, I have this thing going on or whatever. I have this um, great business that I, that I have and I'm a good looking guy. I, I wear sweet clothes. Nobody's on my level kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's still all around him. But when that didn't happen, immediately, he, he goes back to his tendency of avoiding eye contact. And I think, to me, in my head, that signifies some sort of shame or embarrassment immediately because now he doesn't have to face whatever is going on. He can kind of just ignore it until later, right? Until he can try and get back on his feet later and try to figure out how to finesse the situation because at the moment, he knows he's taking the L. He did the same exact thing when um, the pastors or his friends were... Um, confronting him in which he immediately shifted eye contact because he didn't want to look anybody in the eyes. He could not face Mm -hmm. because of that shame and embarrassment because things had not been going his way. He expected them to coddle him because, Hey, you should feel bad for me. This kind of thing didn't work out. And I just, I'm just kind of in a bad space right now. Um, Things aren't going exactly the way I wanted it to. So can you please give me some words of advice and then we'll be out of here. Mm -hmm. That's not what went down. And he was kind of surprised because these were the, the people who were supposed to be in his corner. These were supposed to be guys who were supposed to just understand how it is, and especially with a lot of church culture. There's a lot of like brushing over these kinds of things. If you have a lot of notoriety or if like people know you, they don't call you out. They're not supposed to. Usually mm-hmm. they might say a few words behind the scenes, but everybody kind of just like brushes over it. So then if he's in a position where he's now being confronted, He's like, okay, this didn't go how it's supposed to go because we're in front of cameras and they're calling me out, telling me I should, I'm supposed to stay with someone that I'm not attracted to. Okay, I got to avert abort mission. I'm going to handle this somehow and I'm going to probably cut these guys off. These types of things make him feel very uncomfortable because now he doesn't know how, how to handle the situation. He wants all the attention and support and um, affirmation, which is essentially validation from other people because he's still focused on his own emotions. He's so focused on how he's doing things that he's not worried about, or even cares about how, the, how other people feel. It's about him right now. And it's always about him right now. Um, so I think that's how he's trying to play situations so that he can essentially make himself feel better at every point of every second of every day. Um, and as for Paige, I, I love the fact that she finally stepped up but it somehow feels a little feels a little too late to me. Um, it feels like she sort of like somebody spoke to her. I know for a fact they spoke some. They said something to her, and they kind of like 
boosted her up a little bit so that she would finally come forward and have like a sort of plan and like remember who she is. But at this point, it's like, it's unfortunate because it seems as if you've made a fool of yourself already, right? Like all of the, the confidence that you've had in this scenario, it, it seems like it's out of nowhere. Like, well, this is a totally different page than what we've seen in the past, what, seven episodes? Mm. And though it may have been like, what, 11 days for her, it's it's been some time for us to be able to analyze and try and get deep from what we've seen on the show. It's like, mm, I'm not sure. this. It, this, these two pages that she's been showing, they don't seem congruent. They don't seem like the same person, right? So then something has to have happened in which maybe the producers themselves or maybe they, they got a counselor once they understood the whole situation so that she could actually be able to recognize her self-worth. But at this point, there's it's already been a turning point and we've already seen Chris made a, make a fool out of you on national TV. So it's like, it's it's kind of hard for people to get back on board with, especially after we lost so much faith in Paige in, the, in these last few episodes. It's kind of like, okay, you, you kind of have to do a little bit more for us to to believe in you again, because for all we know, you could turn right back around after saying this in this episode and then be like, but he's still a man of God. Mm. I want to say something along those lines for you to get back with him or still be doing some stuff with him because he's legally your husband. Right. It's just not believable yet. And that's why I think people believe like a lot of this is staged because even even when she was talking about the scenario, it was less about um, her wanting to just like exit the situation because of her self-worth, rather more about her reassuming power. To me, that's the negative mindset, because now you're trying to assert yourself over other people because you feel like you've been stripped of something and you're now trying to get a, some sort of revenge on somebody else which is essentially playing into Chris's hand. I mean, it didn't work out the way that he wanted it to, but you even showing up there would be a sort of affirmation like, okay, you're playing into his hand. You're doing exactly what he wants because he has the two of you over there. And it seemed like there was going to be a lot more friction when the two of you would end up in there, right? And things were going according to your plan. She played it well. She was regal. I, I do commend her for that in, in the sense of being diplomatic with Mercedes, but at the same time, your presence there alone shows that you've taken an L to me. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to be there. And you thought about it and you did it anyway. And your whole premise was, okay, I'm going to assert myself. I'm going to show them who's who. I'm not, if you really have the power, you don't have to do that. you will like, it's, it's like almost as if like lions don't have to roar, right? Their, their presence alone changes the game. And the, the lack of it also changes the game as well. If you really want to assert yourself, you don't have to go. And I feel like this was a lot of, she tried to boost herself, which didn't necessarily, it, it wasn't necessary to me. Mm. In my but that's all I got. Appreciate it, David. Bombs dropped. Sinead, talk to us. David came through. You're going to have to drop your PayPal or your Cash App, sir, so we all know where to send your offering, amen? We want to mm-hmm. take up a love offering for this word on tonight. On a rare room. <laughs> I just want to add this little piece before I mention what I had mentioned uh, in the private chat, y'all. David, you're you're absolutely correct. You know, uh, that's the reason why up to this point we've not heard about any scares of of Paige being pregnant because Paige was ready to have battle of the babies with Mercedes. Mm. Anyway, I wanted to bring up uh, what you asked Chris Kojo because I I think this is a rather fascinating topic. So Chris posts a, first of all, Chris does a lot of stuff on his Instagram. And let me just go ahead and admit now, I requested to follow him because I want to be nosy, okay? Mm-hmm. And I don't have no shame. And if you see this, Chris, yes, I'm following you because I just like to look and see. And you obviously want to provide a show, so I'm here to see it. Anyway, he uh, posted a question poll. And he said, ask me a question. So Kojo asked, he said, will you, after the show, come on to my YouTube channel, Little Black Book 91, mm-hmm. for an interview? And Chris said, I don't know, man. You've been just doing vlogs and never reached out for a convo to get context, exclamation point. Wait, hold on a minute. I did not know he replied. He replied, boo. And he said, that was extremely <laughs> frustrating, exclamation point. Look at I me with the dramatic know. reading. <laughs> so I wanted, I wanted to discuss that because if Chris <laughs> Williams II really mm. brings himself onto this platform, we're going mm. to watch him unravel much like we watched him unravel on TV last night. Mm. Cause we all know he can't 
take it. Mm. So I'm not sure why you, you know, why you would even respond, Chris, but much like they've been asking him to do the unfiltered episodes and he's refused to do those as well. I could see you asking him to come on. I could even see him agreeing, you booking a date and time and Chris not showing up. Now, if he shows up, mm. I'll go back and eat these words. But until then, Chris, I don't think you're ready for this, boo. But if you are, come on, sweetie. We want to talk and have a live panel chat. We just got questions.